And welcome back to another YouTube video. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about the binary search algorithm. Now, in the last video, we talked about the linear search algorithm, a very simple algorithm. Uh, pretty much if this was our list, it looks from the beginning to the end of the list until it found the element that we were looking for. This search algorithm is much faster, especially on large data sets, and it has log n uh, big O notation, meaning that it gets exponentially faster as the data set gets larger. So this is extremely useful uh, and is a lot more useful than the linear search has more applications. So let's get right into how it works. So this is going to be our list up here. Uh, just for example purposes, I know it's extremely simple, but it's just easy to illustrate how things work with a small list. Now, binary meaning two means that we're going to have two main comparisons in this uh, in this search. It's going to be greater than and less than. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the middle indice. This is what the algorithm does, finds the middle indice or index of the list, which in this case would be five. Now it's going to compare the element we're th that we're looking for and right now we're gonna be looking for one to this element. It's gonna say, is one greater than five? No, it's not. Is one less than five? Yes, it is. Now, once we know this information, we then split up the list, or the algorithm splits up the list. So if we know that one is less than five, why would we continue to look this way if we know it's gonna be in the bottom half of the list? So now we have a list of one, two, three, four, and the same process repeats itself. So now we have this list and we're going to look at the middle indice. Now notice this is not an odd number list. So because of this, the indice we're going to be checking is here. It doesn't really matter um, which one you check. If you check this one or this one, we're just going to be checking this one. And then we're going to say, well, is one less than two? Yes, it is. So now we create a list that only has one in it. And then we find that since there's only one element in it uh, and that's the element we're checking, that is one. All right, so I know I went kind of fast, a little bit confusing, but as I go through the code of this algorithm, you'll understand hopefully how this works. So this is my uh, function here. It's not too complex and it is fairly simple to code. So we're gonna start off by sorting our list. So I mentioned that this algorithm only works if the list is sorted. And obviously that's because if we had these in different orders, we wouldn't be able to do the same comparisons uh, that we're doing in the algorithm. Now we start by setting two variables, a top and a bottom variable. So our top is going to be the top section of the list and the bottom is going to be the bottom of the section of the list. And rather than recreating a bunch of different lists every time we, uh, we split it up or we do a comparison, we're just going to be looking at a different part of the list. So rather than recreating a list, which is going to take more time and more memory, we're just looking at a different section of the original list, if that makes sense. So we have our top, our bottom. Uh, this is going to be the whole list because we start at zero and we go to the last indice. And then here, I just print this out just so we can see, uh, we'll be able to see when we run the program. And now we find our middle indice in this while loop. So this middle indice is going to be the top plus the bottom uh, divided by two, just how you find example midpoint of a line or the middle of a list. And this integer division is very important because if we get something like we have five for example and we divide by two then we're going to be getting a decimal number which we don't want all right and then we do our comparisons so we start by checking well is the element that we're looking for right here equal to the element in the list that we're comparing it to so pretty much the one step here so once we check the middle indice we're going to first see well if the element that we're looking for is equal to that middle indice we've now found it we don't need to continue to look through the list if it's not equal to that, then we move down and we say, well, is it less than the middle indice or whatever that element is? If it is, then we're going to be setting our top to our middle. And what that does is it moves pretty much if the top is here at nine, it moves it down to five so that we can then look through the next section of the list like that. And then the next part here, so we say if element is greater than and then same thing. So we're going to move our bottom uh, to the middle. So what we do is we have this our bottom, we would then move it up here. So now the next section of our list is this, and you can see how this continues to go on. Now it is to be noted here, I could just put an else statement. The reason I put elif is just to illustrate more clearly exactly how this works, uh, because obviously if it's not equal to, it's not less than, it's gonna be greater than if it's a number. And this does work for strings in Python. So in Python, you can actually, I'll show you down here. You could actually do, for example, something like this. 
like that and that would actually work as a comparison it's really weird compared to other languages but it does work uh, so you can compare strings like that so this will work for strings if you're using Python and then down here uh, this is just where I create a random list of integers and then I just select a random integer to look for in the list so if we uh, go ahead and we'll run the program here save it then you can see I just simply am printing out the length of the list to show you how many comparisons we're actually doing so we start with 10,000 5,000, 2,500, 1,250, so on, having each time. Now, as we get down to the end here, we have 10 elements left. And at this point, we've now found the uh, element we're looking for, which is at the 1,215th index. Now, this is extremely efficient. And you can see already that if I had tried to do 10,000 items in a linear search, and say maybe we got unlucky and the item we're looking for was at the very end, we would still be waiting for that search to go on. So you can see how much faster this actually gets. Now, if I just add another zero here to the length of our list, 100,000, we can run it again. And you see we're going ex uh, extremely fast considering the amount of items in our list. If I'm not, if I don't print this, it should pop up almost instantly. Oops, just comment that out. And yeah, you can see we get that uh, almost instantly. Now again, if we go to 1 million, there we go. We're getting hit again almost instantly. 10 million. Let's see how fast this one goes. And we're taking a little bit longer on this one, which is to be expected. So yeah, you can see that the uh, binary search is extremely efficient and uh, is obviously better to use than a linear search if you're using longer or larger data sets. The reason we would use linear search over this is only because of this aspect right here. If you look if you're looking at a small data set and you don't want to sort it first, then you would just use the linear search. So yeah, this uh, has been the video on the binary, sorry, not sort, search algorithm. I've just been saying sort for a long time now, haven't I? Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe and I will see you again.